Cam Reddish, Mo Bamba, Rashawn Holmes, John Collins, and Drake Crowder all have one thing in common. These are 10 NBA players being held hostage by their own team. I feel very bad for Cam Reddish. He was drafted to the Hawks with a loaded roster full of young players and didn't get a lot of minutes. He was then traded to the Knicks in hopes that his minutes would go up. And then Coach Tibbs benched him right away. And this season has been no different. He's been riding the bench all season once again. Which just sucks because even Knicks fans know they're wasting a guy's talent. He's a good player that can shoot the three ball. And yes, he's a little inconsistent at times but how can you blame him? He's being put into an inconsistent role. Jay Crowder shouldn't even be on this list, but he put himself on here. He's sitting out and wants to be paid more. Who does Jay Crowder think he is? Kevin Durant? Jay Crowder, I just want to let you know you're not that guy, pal. Jay Crowder, you are a role player, a screen setter, someone that's just supposed to knock down open threes, not a superstar that's extremely underpaid. It makes no sense why he would even sit out, and guess what? It's hurting his trade value. GMs are getting turned off from him sitting out. Matisse Thibel minutes have completely disappeared. He's averaging his lowest minutes per game in his entire career. This season, he's only being played 11 minutes per game. But why? Is PJ Tucker really taking all of Matisse's minutes? Both can barely score the ball to save their life, so why the big dip in Matisse's minutes? The only reason I can come up with is that Doc Rivers is just a bad coach. I also saw a rumor going around saying the Sixers are purposely benching Matisse to lower his value so they don't have to give him a bag and a free agency, which just sucks. Rashawn Holmes has been one of the most underrated centers in the NBA. I love his game a lot, but this season he hasn't got a lot of opportunity due to him not fitting in with this Kings roster. With Sabonis playing a lot of the five and them not being able to play together, he just has not played a lot. I would love to see Rashawn go to a different team and really show what he's made of because I know they're just wasting his talents on the bench. I am mad at the Dallas Mavericks for not giving Jaden Hardy more minutes. After I saw Jaden Hardy in the summer leagues, I got a little too excited and I overreacted and I said Jaden Hardy was going to prove a lot of people wrong and he was going to be the steal of the draft, but sadly for me that just hasn't happened, but it's not Jaden Hardy's fault, it's the Dallas Mavericks fault. I would love to see him get more minutes, so Dallas Mavericks can you please play Jaden Hardy a little more? Obi Toppin was drafted to the New York Knicks and this was a dream come true for Obi because he grew up in New York. This ended up turning into a huge disaster. To this day, Obi still comes off the bench and even in his rookie year, he wasn't getting any opportunity, a chance to prove himself. And Tibbs was playing Taj Gibson's bald head over Obi, which made no sense. Give the young guy a chance, make him become a good NBA player and develop him. Don't just bench him completely and forget about him. Mo Bamba is more known for a song than being the actual NBA player. This season, I think he's actually having a pretty underrated year. He's finishing at the rim better, he's had a higher 3 point percentage, but with the breakout play from Bobo, he's kind of been swept under the rug and he's been on the bench doing great. I think a change of scenery could do wonders for Mo Bamba's stats, I think he could really be put in the spotlight and I think he could be a really good NBA player if he was traded to another team. I am sick and tired of seeing John Collins in trade rumors. Every single year, it's the same exact thing. The Atlanta Hawks are looking to trade John Collins. If I was John Collins, I would have some major trust issues. This year, John Collins has been struggling for the Hawks, and this might be the year where he actually gets traded to a different team, and I think on a different team, he would do a lot better, he would have a bigger role, and he could maybe break out. Duncan Robinson forgot how to shoot a ball and then he got replaced. Duncan Robinson was a gem for the Miami Heat. He was one of the best shooters in the NBA, but then he hit a rough spot. He just forgot how to shoot and got replaced by Max Struess. Max Struess was a great shooter and a way better defender than Duncan Robinson, so the Heat just kept Max Struess and let Duncan Robinson rot on the bench and he hasn't been able to shoot out of his slump even when he was given minutes, so maybe a change of scene could help but 
you really never know. The next guy and final guy on this list is Evan Fournier, and yes, I know, I know, I know, I basically have the entire Knicks roster on my list, but let's just look past that. Evan Fournier, just a couple seasons ago for Orlando, was averaging around 19 points per game. He got traded to the Boston, and I guess he didn't like it in Boston because he ended up signing with the Knicks. The Knicks ended up turning him into more of a spot-up shooter, a catch-and-shoot guy, but I feel like that didn't really fit his skill set. I think he should have been more of a scorer off the bench similar to a Jordan Clarkson or Jordan Poole type player and I feel like that role would have fit him a lot better. 